In a matter of days, the Oak Fire right near Yosemite has burned more than 18,000 acres and destroyed more than 40 structures. Cal Fire says the fire keeps growing because of the state's historic drought and the amount of critically dry brush that comes with it. But there's another consequence to the drought. Parts of Southern California are now under unprecedented water restrictions, all in an effort to protect our drinking water supply. Tomorrow, the U.S. House of Representatives will consider a proposal that will address both of these issues. Joining me now is the author of that legislation, Orange County Congresswoman Katie Porter. Congresswoman, you see her there. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. How does your legislation that will go up for a vote tomorrow in the House help protect Californians? There is a package of bills. I have authored three uh, parts of it. The first would boost pay for our federal wildland firefighters. California has a lot of federal land, and these federal wildland firefighters, we're having trouble recruiting them. We're understaffed. We need to boost their pay and benefits to make sure we have those people on the ground to help fight wildfires. The second bill I have would study, would identify, um, and put in place water management and water uh, rescue reclamation strategies help us manage our groundwater and our basin water better and the third bill the third part of the bill would help identify um, research what we can do differently what what can we learn from natural disasters that occur so we can study them and try to not have them happen or to respond better when they happen in the future it would create a, um, nat a natural disaster safety board model kind of like what we have right now for airplane crashes you, you know we mentioned the oak fire and those images uh, from Yosemite are just absolutely incredible but of course Orange County has had its fair share of wildfires so how critical is this for your constituents there at home it's absolutely critical not only to protect our lands and our homes but also when we do not have staff in place an adequate pay to recruit and hire and train firefighters what happens is we end up having to have emergency crews to bring in people from other states to hire firefighters on overtime from jurisdictions to come onto federal land and it makes already terribly expensive wildfires even more expensive and we lose valuable time when we could be combating them because we simply don't have the federal workforce that we need in place to address the scope of our wildfire risk. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on that since that will go up for a vote tomorrow. Something else that you're very passionate about is gun safety, reducing gun violence. Today on the House floor, you took on a gun manufacturer. You were demonstrative. Here's a look at that. Why should this device require more steps to operate than your company's firearms, which have been used in accidental shootings, mass shootings, and homicides? Congresswoman, uh, okay, so you were pointing to your cell phone, talking about the technology that our cell phones have, about fingerprinting, pointing out to this gun manufacturer that these deadly weapons lack this. What was his response? He refused to commit to putting in place that kind of technology. And what that means is we will continue to have children and others die from unintentional gun um, deaths. So this fingerprint technology is exactly like what you have on your cell phone. It's been in place for over 20 years. It's reliable. It works. And it would do a lot to help make sure we're preventing accidental gun deaths. Um, and they simply, they offer it on some of their weapons. They don't offer it on all of them. They tried to say this is a matter of consumer choice. That CEO really misses the point. We don't allow people to have things like faulty appliances in their homes. We don't allow manufacturers to sell them because if they catch on fire, they could burn down not only your house, but your entire neighborhood. It's exactly the same thing with these guns. We want them to be safe in the marketplace to protect not just the gun owner, but anyone who might encounter that gun. So this fingerprint technology, there's technology to make sure that chambers, um, you can tell when the chamber is um, uh, loaded, hmm. a chamber indication um, device and a magazine device that when you remove the magazine the gun cannot be fired that may seem like common sense and that's because it is uh, we have 12 kids a day dying from any other product in this country we would have outrage and we would have federal safety standards but we have refused to act on this issue with regard to guns you are a member of the congressional gun violence prevention task force you have taken on 
uh, the idea of safer gun storage, uh, closing loopholes when it comes to background checks. What is the single most important thing that you think that you can achieve? And, and the key word there is achieve, given that this is not a bipartisan issue. Well, it should be a bipartisan issue should because be. we hear a lot from Republicans and Democrats, from independents, from all kinds of people about wanting their communities to be safe and wanting everyone to be safe in their community. And that means things like tackling crime, making sure that we're, we're making sure that we have robust strategies to prevent violence, but it also means making sure people are not dying from preventable gun deaths. So, and gun violence has many uh, forms. It can come in the form of a mass shooting. It can come in the form of a preventable gun death that comes from a suicide. It can come from an accidental death from a child. So we need to have multiple strategies. I think what we've seen coming out of the Senate, we got one package passed already. I want to remind everybody, Congress did act on gun violence prevention. The Bipartisan Making Communities Safer Act is now law. I think next we're going to see the House attempt to pass a ban on assault weapons. And I think that is a very, very important step in reducing mass shootings of the kind that we saw in Orange County all too recently. We know that you also introduced, I want to get this in there, uh, bipartisan legislation with Michelle Steele, Republican in Orange County, uh, to posthumously, posthumously honor the Laguna Woods church shooting hero, Dr. John Chang. So we look forward to getting an update on that. Let's uh, change topics now and switch to the January 6th panel. We have seen and heard from that panel nine times. They've had nine hearings. We learned this week, Congresswoman, that the Department of Justice is investigating former President Trump. What is your impression of these hearings as a mom and as a citizen? I think the hearings have been an um, important thing, which is they have helped tell the story and illustrate for people how this all unfolded. At the time this happened, there was so much shock, so much trauma. Um, people were, well, how could this happen? How could this happen? The point of the January 6th hearings is to answer that question. This happened, as the evidence shows, because we had a president who encouraged this kind of violence. He knew people were armed. He knew people were you know, potentially dangerous, and he encouraged them to go to the Capitol. And when violence was ongoing at the Capitol, when our Capitol Police and our law enforcement officers, were, lives were being put at risk and they were being attacked, he refused to act. So instead of asking, how could this happen? We know how it happened. It happened because of President Trump's actions. And now it is up to the Department of Justice to decide if those actions rose to the level of a crime. Do you think that they will, in fact, file criminal charges? I'm going to leave that to the Department of Justice, but I want to make one thing very clear. I expect the Department of Justice to fully and carefully and rigorously investigate any possible allegation of a crime, regardless of the party background, affiliation, or position of power of the person at issue. Okay, and we know that there are more hearings to come uh, a little bit later this fall. Uh, you are Congresswoman Katie Porter from the 55th, uh, 45th, pardon me, 45th District. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you.